Anyways, we shall start with a general questions. What do you like about Amherst? Ready? Go. Starting from Nancy, we'll go. Oh, oh me? Wait, wait. Yes. Generally, yes. But, like, but like, but like, wait, wait, wait. But like, what category though? Like, academically, socially, like what? Mm. Everything. In general. Mm. I like the Amherst community. I think it's really easy to find. Like, there's not a lot of people, but it's easy to find your people. Mm. If that makes sense. Yeah. Yes, I like that. Okay, Fiona. I think I kind of like our town, mm. which is no longer open, but we have a really nice college town, and it's like not as isolated as you thought it would be. It's really convenient actually because we have the bus system, but like. It's also not the, like the city, so we also have like bird sanctuaries and like trails to go on. Especially during like this time, students still have a lot of things to do, even during quarantine. Yeah. So I like our location, especially now. Mm. Mm, I would say I like our professors <clears throat> most of the time. I mean, there's always those professors, you know, but like mm -hmm. most of them are really nice. They're willing to help, and they hold a lot of office hours, and they encourage you to come to them. <laughs> mm, okay, I like the student to like, I guess, faculty or staff ratio because like since we're a small school, we get more attention on an individual basis. Mm -hmm. So if you ever have like a problem with like, you know, finance or like living situations or just anything in general, they'll get back to you pretty quickly and it feels like the support system is, is like pretty close-knit and like I guess that would be hard to find in a bigger school, so I really like the close-knit community. Mm. Great! Um. <laughs> I don't know what else to say, we were still the same! <laughs> Alright, that was... Um, extracurriculars. Like yeah. what, what we do? Yeah, what you do, what you recommend. Mm -hmm. Alright, go. Mm -hmm. So, um... I'm involved with, okay, so I'm part of ASA, I'm, which is Asian Students Association. I'm um, the communications chair of ASA. Um, I also do ASIMS, which is Amherst College Emergency Medical Services, and uh, I'm a tour guide. Really? Wow, so different. Okay, Piana, what are you? What extra frequency do you do? Uh, I thought we were supposed to recommend something. Oh, recommend? Okay. But so I think that if you're a pre-med, um, ASIMS is something really good to do <gasps> because it gets you like very familiar with um, the medical scene, I guess. And um, you get like hands-on experience with emergency medicine. Um, I also like recommend ASA for those that um, want to learn more about their agent identity. What am I? Oh, I'm also a tour guide. So if you want to help other prospective students, then being a tour guide is also really nice. And you get exercise. Yeah. I guess like, since Nancy talked about clubs, I guess also finding a job on campus. Mm. It's actually like really easy to find a job on campus since we have so many available, like just sitting there or actually doing stuff like tour guide. I, I'm also a tour guide and then I do like mentorship, which I also get paid for, but you basically just don't do that much, you know what I mean? But you still do something. <laughs> but that also introduces you to more people like that you're working with and you also get money. Mm. Period. Ooh, Kelly, this is good. Yes. It is, right? Mm. Alright, I have this. Mm. Have some? Mm. Yes. Um, I will also recommend jobs. I don't do something that requires interviews because unfortunately I have not passed interviews yet. But I'll get there one day. Mm -hmm. yes, but really. for now, um, I worked at the Science Center Cafe like last semester. That was pretty nice. You get free food. And um, Davi um, worked at Schwen's last, um, for both semesters of freshman year. And you also get free food. but. Shams has better food, but it's not open right now, so I don't know if you can apply there. And then I'm right now, I'm a fitness monitor, so I just basically go to the gym. Yes, and monitor the situation, because like the gym could be a place where Corona is like very abundant and things. So 
Yes, I will have to disinfect all the equipment and such. I'm trying to call Gina, but she's not answering. But there are a lot of jobs you can get like without doing anything. You get nominated to be like tutors and graders of like whatever you're doing. Also, um, note taking. Awesome. Something is really nice and convenient oh, but yeah, because note taking no -taking is like note taking is one of those jobs that it's like you get paid for doing what you already do for sitting in class and taking notes. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Like. I think a lot of students like doing that. If you're into music, Amherst is also a great place to continue that passion, oh. whether you're doing it seriously or just for fun. So, um, <laughs> all of last year I took lessons and so did Fiona and Nancy. Mm -hmm. I'm not taking lessons right now because like they're over Zoom, but I'll probably start again next semester. And it's actually like free for all four years as long as you're on some sort of financial aid and you take like a music course. It doesn't have to be like theory, like it could be music history. And um, I did the symphony orchestra which was like a big time commitment so like five hours of rehearsal per week but i would say like the community is really nice and everyone gets super close and yeah some of my good friends are from orchestra as well and yeah it's like you don't have to be a serious musician everyone's there to just have fun and yes so i recommend to try out for the orchestra plus it's low stakes it's not that intimidating. Do you get credit for orchestra? Mm. Oh, credit for that's both. a good, yes, yes. You do get credit, half credit for orchestra and for music lessons. So it's a great GPA booster. GPA booster. True. True. Freshman dorm, or dorms, because we're in a sophomore dorm now. Okay. Um, wait, dorms in general just freshman year? I think freshman year, right? Mm. Okay, so. If you haven't seen our freshman dorm before yet, you should check it out on Kelly's channel. Kelly will link it down, down below. below. Right, Kelly? Yeah. So, um, in that video, we showed my dorm, Fiona's dorm, Kelly's dorm, Kayla's dorm, and Navi's dorm. But what um, happened? Oh. Tina didn't show her dorm. Um, but, um, so I stayed in Pratt, specifically in room 205. Um, she remembers? Yes. Um, and it was really nice. I had a double, and um, I think Amherst usually does randomized roommates, but I think that this year they actually changed it so that you could choose your own roommate. They have really a roommate this year. Girl, what do you mean? No, I know, but like for for following years, oh. you can choose it now, um, which is cool, but I actually recommend the randomized roommate thing because I actually got to meet my, like, my roommate from freshman year with someone that I probably would never have talked to if I, um, didn't do like randomized roommates, but she ended up being like, like we had a lot of interests, like same, similar interests with music, and um, yeah. Cool. Shout out to Anaya. Yeah, shout out to Anaya. You should also link Anaya's channel down below. She also has a YouTube channel. Yeah. Um, but yeah, but the rooms are pretty nice. I think they were nicer than um, our sophomore year dorms. Um, <laughs> but it's a, it was a double, so I guess now we live, in, I live in a single, so it's different. But Fiona, take it away. Kind of said everything. Mm, but she, you live in a different building. Uh, you all girls, like all women's, all women's, right? Mm. Well, I was in an all women's floor, and I took that for granted. <laughs> but this year, I realized all women's floor was a lot cleaner. Um, yeah, if I have a chance again next year, girl, I'm going all women's again. But Colette is fine too. Like, if you prefer, I would have that also. Just the bathroom, a little bit. A little bit, a, a little bit of a downgrade, I'll say. Mm. I feel like our dorm itself is just a little bit of a downgrade. Mm. I feel like as freshmen, you get to all the the best oh. resources because they want to baby you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we are so like center of this campus mm. with the freshman squad. Yeah. Um, it was I live also lives in Prague. Basically the same thing Nancy had to say. <clears throat> but one of the things I did not like about Pratt was the water pressure was not very good in the bathroom. You get like trickle of water. Like I went to Fiona's dorm and they were like, it was a good water pressure. And I was like, the good bathrooms, I'm telling you. And then um, at night, like at 2 a.m., like there'll be a lot of noise in the common room because our common room is very open. 
So like people can like you don't have to like go up an elevator, you don't have to climb that many stairs. And it's like what people are shown when you go through tours. So it's like very a big space for everyone to gather and have fun, but like if your group like has like the common room, like people study there, like they hang out. It's a pretty good place <laughs> except sometimes it gets really loud at night. I also lived in Pratt. 203 was Nancy's neighbor. And yes, I also took Pratt for granted because my room was bigger there too. But more is nice too. Um, let's see. Oh, R4, I think, was probably one of the biggest ones in the first mm -hmm. year. So if you are in the second floor of Pratt or the first floor, because it's like um, connected by stairs. It's basically all like one big floor. Then be prepared for lots of noises, lots of running around in the middle of the night, especially on the weekends. Mm -hmm. But yes, Pratt is a nice dorm. And I had a good experience because um, I went through a housing accommodation process to get a single, which, mm. yes. Um, should I kind of explain that? Exactly. Yeah. Should I link? Commented on one of my. Mm -hmm. I commented on Kelly's uh, dorm tour video of like the link of where you can like fill out the request form. So if you're interested, if like because you have some sort of like I don't know health reasons, <sighs> mental health reasons, um, anything that you feel like you should like you benefit being in a single your first year mm -hmm. because most people get doubles. <laughs> Check out her door video. Yes. Oh, also, um, as it's like a reminder, or this is all pre-COVID. Oh, so oh. I don't know if you can have it the same way if you were here and now, but this is all pre-COVID. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, dining hall food. <laughs> <laughs> Oopsie. Did you keep that in? No. Oopsie. <laughs> dining hall food? Uh, yeah. Um. Okay, so we have Bao. We only have one dining hall because our school is pretty small. Um, I would say that the food, if I'm being honest, is edible, but not the best. But it's not the worst. But it's not the worst either. I definitely think that after Corona, like this year, it's gotten a lot better. I have no complaints because I think that our school is handling it a lot better than most schools are. But um, don't be expecting some gourmet five-star mission mm -hmm. meal yeah but it's okay i'd say there's enough um there's like options for everyone if you're like vegan vegetarian halal um so allergy allergy yeah there's options for everyone so it's not hard to find something to eat mm. and i guess like i i feel like amrin's listened to his student a lot so we have like a lot of like improvements and stuff like, like late we have night. the late, late night bow which is like at nine and you can go get food because people are like it closes too early but then also like right now we can't but then like normally we can just walk to town which is like super convenient we can get food delivery and we have like, a lot of food around us and you can also go to the other campus <coughs> umass or <laughs> for their dining hall food if you want to try something new but i just think it's like eating wise, it's pretty good here, right? It's not like New York City, but like it's pretty good. I'm I'm okay, and we have a lot of Asian restaurants and three boba shops. Yes, Moji. Yes. Um. Apart from Val, there's Grab and Go, um, which they don't have right now because basically everywhere is Grab and Go. But like they used to serve like quick takeout meals that you can just take and go because some people didn't have time in between classes. They'll give like pizza. Like a whole mini pizza, California rolls, um, wraps, salads, drinks. It was actually pretty nice. And it was very convenient and quick. Um, there will be menus that you like and you don't like. And yeah. you'll figure that out very quickly because they go through their food like so fast that you get a repeat very often. So, But I think that even though there's... Like that happens for Val too, like our big dining hall. But I think that as long as you find out what you like and what you don't like, then you can always like find a different option. Yeah. You know, either like at a cafe on campus or a grab and go, or you can go off campus and get food. So there's always an option, even if you don't like what they're being served. I recommend the West Coast wrap at the Science Center Cafe <laughs> in Schwems. That shit slaps. 
You can also make ramen like we are right now. Lots of ramen knife. Ooh, another option. I don't know if you guys mentioned the. Right now it's the Schwen's campus store, but but like before COVID, it was just called Schwen's, and it opens at like night, like after 7 p.m. I think, and it stays open pretty late. And there you get like your typical comfort food, like onion rings, mozzarella sticks, quesadillas. Um, oh, milkshakes. The cookies and cream and coffee, very good. I recommend. Oh, well, French fries, like sandwiches. So those food are also very good. And normally we have stir fry, so you can actually mm -hmm. like kind of cook your own food. You can't. You're not allowed to like bring oil because they're scared you start a fire or something. Yeah. And you're not allowed to bring eggs, but. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, we'll just leave it there. We'll leave it there. We'll leave it there. Yeah. Val, uh, the Val, like employees are gonna. Say this. <laughs> the Val, I'm so the sorry. From Val. No, all the all the dining employees are so nice. Mm. Yeah. That's totally so nice. They're so nice. But like, if I say thank you, they won't be like, thank you for thanking me. Oh and my I'm God, like, so nice. <laughs> yeah. Alrighty. Um, what other general questions? Open the bag. Then it will be loud for the yeah. open curriculum. Oh, oh, academics. I guess. Not a good topic. <laughs> mm, not a fun topic. Recommendations, humanities, STEM. I mean, we're all STEM. Except her. <laughs> okay, well, why don't we just say, say major. Is there a major? Okay. Perspective. So, major. I'm a perspective biochem Spanish double major. So, um, have the best of both worlds, humanities and STEM. Mm, I am like econ and Asian language and civilization with a specialization Jap specialization <laughs> specialization Japanese. So I have these like history courses or like film events sometimes, and then also like econ courses, which are like low key not really STEM, but at the same time you have to do math. So mm, yeah, basically. Mm. I'm a bio and math potential double major because right now I'm like trying out, out both. Um, they're both very hard, so maybe I'll just major in one. We'll see. But, but the yeah. math department is good. Oh yeah, I have a lot to say. Like not a lot to say because I'm only taking like a couple math, one math class. But like my experience was very good. Like I really like the math department. They have so many office hours. And the professors are very nice, like, they don't look down on you, they're willing to set up, like, extra office hours if necessary, and they're very helpful, and, like, attentive towards your needs, yes. What? <laughs> Wait, no, I but I do, I do feel a lot of people who didn't like math before would come here and then they end up being math major. Just not me, but... <laughs> Not no, I, I I have like hatred towards math, so that's a different story. But I feel like most people really love the math department. Yeah, they're really nice. Mm. Hot. Mm. Yeah, that's um, why I'm not drinking that right now. I want to be either like potential like chem major or stash. Not I'm not gonna double major because they're both too hard. But we'll see after this semester. Chemistry department is great here. Oh my god. <laughs> okay, stop. I'm sorry. A lot of them, they're all very intellectual. They're all very friendly, good teachers. Um, they hold lots of office hours. So even if chemistry is not your strongest subject and you know, you're know you like struggling, like I did, and, um, there's always help that you can go, what is it? Go get. Go to. Yes, there's always hope you can go get, and they will always be willing to help you. Yeah. But chem is hard, so beware. Um, stats. There are really nice professors and stats. My current professor is really cute, and she's so nice. So, um, yeah, the stats department is pretty small, but I recommend taking a stats class. Just make sure to do your research about who your professor is. And don't be afraid that if you feel like the class is like not suited for you or if you feel like it's too advanced, 
don't be afraid to drop out because I think that's a, probably one of the best decisions you can make for yourself at drop period because I dropped out of a class and I feel like if I didn't, I would have struggled a lot throughout the rest, even more so. Which class? Stat 230. She was an oh. intellect. She's an intellect, so she didn't have to take 135. Mm, I'm but, wrong, now, wrong. but now, but this semester she's in 230 though. Yes, and I feel so much more prepared, Confident. even though it's it feels like still stressful, but if I were to just go into one like 230 without 135, I think, I would have had a mental breakdown every week. A week? That already happened. I didn't even talk about econ department. I realized I said something. <laughs> Don't talk about it. But econ is like, I think my two majors have like the biggest difference because econ are like, we have most of the biggest classes here because it's like a really popular major and also like non econ majors would still take econ class because like, Econ. I don't know because of econ and then people who don't know what they're gonna do also take econ just to be like I, I'm a prospective econ major haha <laughs> not talking about myself no <laughs> but like, but like um, the classes are generally bigger and then but most of the econ professors by most I mean like I should say six out of seven yeah. that I've had everyone's really nice mm, really smart and than. like Me too. easy to talk to so it should be fine Okay. One thing you think Amish should uh, improve or you don't like about Amish? Mm -hmm. Let me think. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Gotta be very careful with the wording. I don't even know. Don't give me an idea. I would say, this is what I say on tour. I would say it's like we have a lot of resources here on campus, but we don't really Come communicate that well. It's like they do um, put it on emails, but it's like a long ass email and no one reads through it. So people don't know like there are help you can go to, there are money you can get, and there are like resources that will support you for like whatever background you're in. But then I just feel like we should do a better job communicating that. And I know a lot of prospective students tell me that our website is... Can do some work. Yeah, it's a little bit hard to navigate. Yeah, but they're trying to fix that like this summer. I work with the admissions office and they tried really hard to make it a little bit better and they made some improvements so hopefully later on we don't have that problem <laughs> um okay so i also say this on tours but um i think i mean it doesn't really affect me that much but i think that because it doesn't affect me i'm contributing to this but there is like a underlying like uh student athlete versus like just regular student divide at our school but i think that part of it has to i mean it's like any other college campus we don't have any greek life so our cliques like any other college campus is like divided between like athletes and the non-athletes and i think that there's really nothing that can be done about this but and it really personally doesn't affect me that much but um i mean does it affect you guys my roommate was an athlete. My roommate was also an and athlete. And then they were both like really nice. Yeah. And, like, yeah. Awesome. Like the thing is like, um, it's like, like none of us are athletes and all, I mean, every single athlete that I've met has been really nice, but it's mm. just like, it's just because they hang out with their teammates all the time, um, that they're always like grouped together with their team. So <clears> whenever you're like, even in Val, like in our dining hall before Corona, mm. there was an entire section of Val that people, it wasn't like, specifically for athletes but people just were like just don't sit there that's where all the athletes sit because they're like really long table yeah because they're really big tables for the teams mm -hmm. um so everyone was like just don't sit there because that's where the swim team sits or like that's where like the baseball team sits like yeah well, i guess it's not like you can't be friend with athletes yeah like it's they not, you can yeah. be friend with them it's just because your friend group is really different that you won't be able to be like super close friends yeah. but like you can still have athletes friends yeah have friends who are like i think part of it is just like the nature of a, a college campus because we don't have any greek life that's just how our school is like divided yeah all right kelly how about you mm. don't know i think i had a problem with communication as well because there's a lot of times when i don't know what's happening and people will be like oh like, did you go to this? And I'm like, no. How'd you know about that? And they're like, oh, like, we had to go through, like, we heard it from someone else, or there's, like, a lot of other information. And then during orientation, they would tell us, oh, go here. But I didn't know where there was. And then everyone, like, freshmen were, like, running around confused. 
to be late to some of the orientation events. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I think that's one of the things that I want like Amherst to like have be a little different on like communication. <laughs> yeah, the way it goes. <laughs> I'm staring at her like it goes up the straw a little bit and it goes like that. Up and then down. Go ahead, Kayla. Mm -hmm. I guess the communication too and the way that this is on a like <clears throat> like down a little a bit. more casual note. Right but like today we tried to go to like the Keith Campus Center and right in there there's like the post postal office and like the website will say like w like specific hours. But then, like, it's randomly closed on some days, and I feel like there's a lack of communication there that if you work, because, like, they don't open on Sunday, so if you, like, really need a package, then you, like, have to go Saturday, like, early in the mornings, or you have to wait till Monday. But then today, I think it was just, like, the campus store was also just randomly closed, even though it said it would be open. So I wish there was more consistency in that. It's not a big deal, but just a little thing. Yes. Yes. Oh, and for, oh, oh, one more thing. For out-of-state people, I think it's difficult or, like, complicated to, like, go to any college that's out-of-state because you have to, like, fly there. But Amherst, um, I guess I didn't realize how complicated the transportation would be, like, going from the airport to here or from here to the airport. And especially because we don't have a lot of, like, Lyfts or Uber like rides that are willing to go from here all the way to Boston or like Bradley and their shuttles are very limited so like you have to sign up quickly or else you have to just kind of figure it out all on your own so I wish there was a little bit more guidance I guess for the transportation because it gets a little hectic towards like break but other than that it's all good Yes. Wait, hold up. Let me. Some people want it, had questions. I think I answered most of them, but if someone has more questions, mm. we can answer questions about application. Oh, uh, okay. Application process. Yeah. So, um, okay. So Fiona and Kelly applied through QuestBridge, and then me and Kayla um, both applied through um, Common App. So um, I can just describe for myself, I applied um, BD to Amherst, so um, that's like a binding um, decision. So if you get in, that means that you have to, you're basically signing a contract that you're going to go to Amherst as long as um, financially you can go to Amherst if you get in. So I got in, so I got in through ED, and um, Amherst is pretty generous with their financial aid, which is one of the reasons why I picked to go, like, I chose to apply here ED, and I really like the school, so, yeah. If you only want to describe Questbridge? Um, I can't really remember. I can't add all the things, because I don't really remember. I applied, like, last minute, because I thought I wouldn't get in, um, but I did. And, um, I, I just remember I applied to Amherst because it's, like, one of the top liberal arts school, and I was like, I want to go to a liberal arts school, so mm -hmm. I just quirky. added it onto the list. She's but quirky. For QuestBridge, for final match, I think you can rank to up to, like, how many? 10, 12. 12 schools. And then it's, like, by the ranking you do, if you get in your number one school, you go to your number one school, it's, like, uh, finding. If you get in, you get rejected by your number one, number two, but got accepted by number three, then you go to number three. So it's, like, ED, but you have more options. Um, and you get to rank whatever school you have. I think I ranked Amherst like number four, and I got in. I don't know about Kelly. Kelly's on. I don't know if I should say this out loud. You don't. Don't. You don't have to. All right. Mm, but anyways, it's like sometimes we end here because we really wanted to be here. Sometimes it's like accidentally. But like once you get here, you feel like it's you'll a like good it. Yeah, you'll like it. Yeah, you'll like it. I feel like it's. Again, the communication and like they're not doing enough for advertising. Like I feel like not enough people know about the good side of Amherst. Like people yeah. don't even know we have an open curriculum. Yeah. Don't even know like our financial aid is so strong. Like because yeah. we're just doing. I I honestly didn't know anything about Amherst. Like like until and she like, applied ED. I applied ED, and the only reason why I applied ED was because. I literally was like scrolling through the internet. I was like, hmm. Acceptance rate. <laughs> no, no, I wasn't. Not even. I literally looked up uh, uh, small liberal arts schools on the East Coast, and this one popped up because I was really looked, um, 
and I had no idea at all. Like I didn't even know that one of my like because it's such a small school, not many mm -hmm. people apply. Um, yeah, but, it's but you're all here, so you are doing the right thing. <laughs> motivational speaker yes also open curriculum just means that we don't have like core requirements. Um, core requirements so basically like if you go to uc there's a list of classes you have to complete as well as major requirements but we don't have that so you have like a chance to explore your interests and take classes that you want even if it's not like in your major which i think is very good because it gives you flexibility which is why it's a liberal arts college mm -hmm. The only requirement we have is the freshman seminar, which is like, um, it's basically the class is designed so that it, it levels the playing field for like uh, English, like so writing and reading skills because everyone comes from different backgrounds. So it's designed to um, strengthen your reading and writing. But yeah, it's the only required class we have. But mm -hmm. Kayla, your experience. Oh, okay. Um, my brother went to like a, a liberal arts college in the West Coast. And there, they have like a closed curriculum, so he had a like he was required to take like a special, um, and he went pre med, but even with pre med, there wasn't a lot of flexibility, so he was required to take like bio his first year. But here, the great thing is, you can literally take bio these chem classes, all the required classes, whenever. So there are like some seniors in bio, I mean, we're sophomores, we're taking it now, people will take it the first year, mm -hmm. so everyone is taking it at their own pace, so it's not that stressful, you can fit it in your schedule however you want, and I guess a good thing about that is, because you all have your own different classes and schedules, even if you're like in pre-med or like in the same major, it doesn't really feel as competitive. Mm -hmm. So everyone kind of like helps each other and it's not really cutthroat, which mm -hmm. I really appreciate. So I haven't had um, much negative experience with like, the, like this environment being too cutthroat because everyone is willing to help and everyone is just doing their own things, being happy. Yes. And this will be our final question, and it is about partying culture at Amherst. Oh. This will be a very happy note to end on, partying! All right, go. Okay, so like any other college campus, Amherst, of course, has parties. Um, most of the parties, I think, on campus are hosted either by athletic teams or affinity groups, like most of them are. So um, athletic, like sports parties are usually exclusive like it's not exclusive none of the parties at Amherst are exclusive there's actually a rule that you're not allowed to kick anyone out of, of a party just because they got rid of affinity oh, not affinity what is a it greek life greek greek life for that yeah um because yeah you're basically not allowed to kick anyone out of a party unless they're like disturbing like the peace basically um in any way um but i mean i think it's a little bit weird for like you just showed up to a, like a sports team's party, but, but if your friend was like someone on yeah. the sports team, it's really common for people. That yeah, like so that's common. But I think most people, most of our party culture goes into like affinity groups and mm. clubs. Um, so there's that. Of course, all like affinity <coughs> groups have parties. Um, I think it's a very inclusive party environment. So like, if if you want to go, you can go. If you don't want to drink, you don't have to drink. There's no pressure to do any of that. Um, but it's very safe, I think. Yeah. Does anyone else want to talk about it? And I guess like for people who don't like partying, like the party culture over here at Amherst is not crazy. Yeah. Like you will probably end up going to one or two of them. But like if you're not into like drinking or anything, I don't like, I, I guess it's me. Like I don't feel pressure to drink when I don't want to. And I feel like it's easy for me to leave if I just want to. And there are a lot of different activities you can do that's not drinking and like party related. It's like we have, what is it called? Uh, AC After Dark. AC After Dark, they organize events. We also have like common big clubs like Outing Club where you can go like nature related stuff. Yeah. But there's just a lot of fun events to do even if you don't like partying. Yeah. So, so last semester, two semesters ago, ASA had like ice skating events and like um, the KSA had a party. Oh, when I went to the party, there was food. I just went there for the food. Lots of free food. It was very I, good food. I think the bottom line is you don't apply to Amherst because you want to party. Yeah. No one, no one applies to Amherst because you want to party. party. It's not a party school. Also, um, I was kind of shocked when I came here because on the weekdays, you will not find a party anywhere. Everyone's studying. Mm -hmm. The science center is like filled up. So it's Sunday. Yeah. And Sunday then, too. um, 
when Friday gets here at night, there's some parties. Saturday, there's a lot more, and the signs mm -hmm. are empty. But then on Sunday, everyone's back to the grind yeah, <laughs> and everyone, studying again. It's really common for people to like go to parties and then like go back to studying. Yeah, <laughs> they're like studying is still like the priority people will party here. from like nine to eleven and then go back to the rooms. Mm -hmm. Parties do end like early here if you like. Yeah, they yeah. do. They end pretty early. Like, just so you can study afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. But in, in general, I think it's very safe. How yeah. Um, and also, I'm, I was kind of scared of going to parties and stuff when I first came here. <laughs> when it ends, we'll do that. Sorry. She plays a flute. to go to parties everyone's very nice about it just because you don't go to a party doesn't mean you won't make friends your friends will understand and if you don't understand are they friends. really your friends yes and okay yes True. next tea anything to add about the party yeah oh you can talk about how it's open to five college oh mm. yeah yeah so a lot of like affinity groups um will have like oh we have like a five college consortium that has umass smith mount holyoke Hampshire. Hampshire, and then there's Amherst. So some of these like events or parties are like open to all of five colleges. So you'll see people from UMass or like even Mount Holyoke, even though it's far away, <clears throat> Smith and Hampshire come and then yes, you can also make friends with people outside of the college. And those parties are usually like big and they're in like the powerhouse and they usually have free food. So you should go for the food, and then leave maybe, but yeah. Yeah, party party culture isn't very big here. It's the bottom line. It's not very serious. Um, but if there, if you want to party, there are parties available for you to attend. And that will be our end because we finished eating basically. And I think that was the last question that I have in mind to be answered. <laughs> Paul Kelly's study account. Yeah. Um, Maxilla uh, <laughs> studies will be linked down below, and if Kelly doesn't link it, I will comment it. <laughs> Bye.